well, I'm not good enough to do a playthrough, but uh, let's start a game. Welcome adventure to Mountain Blade Warband. Before beginning the game, you must create your character. Remember that in the traditional medieval society depicted in the game, war and politics are usually dominated by male members of the nobility. That does not, however, mean that you should not choose to play a female character or one who is not of noble birth. Male nobles may have a somewhat easier start, but women and commoners can attain all of the same goals and, in fact, may have a much more interesting, if more challenging, early game. Select your character's gender. Well, I'm going to be male. You were born years ago in a land far away. Your father was... Uh, let's have... I want to start as low as possible, but uh, without necessarily in the negatives. Let's do a hunter. You were the son of, the fa uh, of a family who lived off the woods, doing whatever they needed to make ends meet. Hunting, woodcutting, making arrows, even a spot of poaching whenever things got tight. Winter was never a good time for your family, as the cold took animals and people alike. But you always lived to see another dawn. Though your brothers and sisters might not be so fortunate, you started to learn about the world almost as soon as you could walk and talk. You spent your early life as... Um, Let's see, how about a street urchin? As a boy growing out of childhood, you took to the streets doing whatever you must to survive, begging, thieving, and working for gangs to earn your bread. You lived from day to day in this violent world, always one step ahead of the law and those who wished you ill. Then as a young adult, Life changed as it always does. You became um, maybe a game poacher since we were like a hunter, whatever. Though the distinction felt sudden to you, somewhere along the way, you have become a man. And the whole world seemed to change around you. Uh, dissatisfied with common men's desperate scrabble for coin, you took to your local lord's own forest and decided to help yourself to its bounty. Laws B D A M N E D. You hunted stags, boars, and geese, and sold the precious meat under the table. You cut down trees right under the watchmen's noses and turned them into firewood that warmed many freezing homes during the winter. Well, at least he did good things. <laughs> well, at least things for people. All for a few silvers, of course. But soon everything changed and you decided to strike <coughs> strike out <coughs> sorry on your own as an adventure. What made you make uh take this decision was uh let's say being forced out of your home. Only you know exactly what caused you to give up your old life and become an adventurer. However, you know you cannot go back. There's nothing to go back to. Whatever home you may have had is gone now, and you must face the fact that you're out in the wide, wide world, alone to sink or swim. Become an adventurer and ride to your destiny. Um, allow me to quit without saving. Now enter your name and distribute your attribute skills and weapon points. You can click on various elements on the screen to learn how each one will affect your character. All right. Uh, let's, let's make like a samurai in the game. So what would be um, 
sort of a Japanese type name. How about Hiro Niji? Hiro Niji. Uh, or uh, how about Tanamura? Tanamura sounds more dis direct. Hey, I have four attribute points to distribute. My strength starts at nine, agility nine, intelligence six, charisma six. Um, we definitely want to start off with fighting because we'll use tournaments and um, arenas to increase our early experience and money. And we'll use trading also. So let's add, uh, let's work our strength up to a 15 before we do anything else. So we'll make it strength 13. And so the power strike, let's bring that up to three. Uh, how about... about four we'll just bring the actually uh yeah we'll bring it up to four and because that's the highest you divide the strength by three and that gives it goes four times in there so the maximum is four power strike what it does is each point to this skill increases melee damage by 8%. We already have two in power draw. Each point to this skill, up to four plus power draw requirement of the bow, increases bow damage by 14%. Uh, we have one in weapon master. We have two in athletics, which improves the running speed. One in riding which enables us to ride horses, one in looting, two in tracking, one in pathfinding, three in spotting. Uh, let's add one to prisoner management. And let's add one to inventory management. Because our first goal will be simply to improve our man personally and to gain enough denarii to start businesses. And sort of samurai-like, he'll go for a sword and bow, archery. So... Increase those first. I uh, don't want... And we'll work on the others, too. All right, so one-handed weapons, 44. Two-handed weapons, 32. Pole arms, 32. Archery, 85. Crossbow, 16. Throwing, 24. All right. Let's click done. And age will make him a little bit older. And we'll give him a full beard if we can find it. And for the hair. Let's go shorter on the hair and a little more organized. Uh, skin. Want him to have gray hair. So we'll consider this gray hair. Um, his nose is kind of flat, isn't it? Mm. 
Okay. And let's look at his eyes here. The eyebrows. Um, how do we make them closer together? All right, that's good enough. All right, you hear about Calradia, a land torn between rival kingdoms battling each other for supremacy, a haven for knights and mercenaries, cutthroats and adventurers, all willing to risk their lives in pursuit of fortune, power, or glory. In this land, which holds great dangers and even greater opportunities, you believe you may leave your past behind and start a new life. You feel that finally you hold the key to your destiny in your hands, free to choose as you will, and that whatever course you take, great adventures will await you. Drawn by the stories you hear about, Calradia and its kingdoms to you. Now, I'm going to start in the kingdom of the Rodox so that we can get the crossbowmen and the um, spearmen to start with. I think that will be the most balanced because I want some archery type units and some foot soldier type to start with. I know the Swadian knights, the Vager um, archers, the... Um, um, yeah, I, like I know the stronger units, but I think the most balanced would be those Rodok units. If you disagree on them being balanced, getting from one area, the archery and the fighting type units in one, let me know. But that's going to be the base of my force. So we're going to take a ship to Jalkala in the kingdom of the Rodoks. I came by ships skirting the cliffs where the Rodok highlands meet the sea. Much of the coastline was obscured by tendrils of fog that snaked down the river valleys, but occasionally I caught sight of a castle watchtower rising above the mist. And on one occasion, a beacon fire burning to warn of an enemy warband. I knew, you knew, that's me, that you were relatively safe at sea, as you were too far south to risk encountering the sea raiders who trouble the coast of the Nordic lands. But it was still a relief to reach the Selver Estuary, gateway to the port of Jelkala, and see a Rodok galley riding at anchor, its pennants fluttering in the evening breeze. Okay, and I will click continue. You are exhausted by the time you find the inn in Jalkala and fall asleep quickly. However, you awake before dawn and are eager to explore your surroundings. You venture out onto the streets, which are still deserted. All of a sudden, you hear a sound that stands the hairs of your neck on end. The rasp of a blade sliding from its scabbard. Is this going to let me take his stuff? Mm. Are you all a uh, merchant of Jelkala? Are you all right? Well, I guess you're alive at any rate. I'm not sure that we can say the same for the other fellow. 
that one that's one less thief to trouble our streets at night. Although heaven knows he won't be the last. Anyway, maybe you can help me with something. Let's talk more inside. Out here, we don't know who's listening. The merchant takes you to his house. Once inside, he stands by the door for a while checking the street. And then finally, convinced you have not been followed, comes near to you to speak. I for inventory. I have some dried meat and some furs. I have a rawhide coat that's plus 10 to body armor. Hide boots that's plus 10 to leg armor. A chipped axe, two-handed, that swings for 31 damage. Speed rating 91 and a weapon reach of 108. The barbed arrows, there are 30 of them with plus two to damage. And I have a hunting bow. Its damage is 15, and the accuracy 99, the speed rating 100. And I've started with 40 dinars in my pocket. And, uh, all right, I guess I'll press F to talk to the merchant of Jalcala. The merchant of Jalcala. Now, let me explain my proposition. We've always had brigands in the hills, driven to banditry by war, debt, or love of violence. Recently, however, they've been getting bolder, leaving their camps in the wild and venturing into town looking for unwary prey. The watch commander tells us it's because of all the fighting on the frontiers. Fewer men to keep an eye on the streets. But I'm not sure what to make of that. It seems to me that the most logical explanation is that these bandits have an ally inside the walls who helps them enter unnoticed and helps them identify particularly tempting targets. Last week, you see, they took my brother. I don't know what my brother was thinking. A lad from a prominent house, out alone after dark in times like these. Well, I suppose you were too. But you're a stranger here and didn't know how bad things have become. He had no such excuse. But he's family. So what can you do? If you don't protect your kin, then people will start thinking that you can't protect your investments either. And I can't have that. No doubt the gang will soon send word about a ransom, but I don't care to pay it. So here's my proposition. You look like you've had a bit of experience with a blade. And more importantly, you must have a bit of fire in your belly, or you wouldn't be coming to Calradia to seek your fortune. So here's what I'm asking you to do. Gather a small party, track down these bandits to their lair, teach them a lesson they won't forget, and get my brother back safe. In return, you'll earn my lasting gratitude and a bit of silver. What do you say? Well, let's see. We're going to be helping this guy out uh, with his uh, brother that's been kidnapped. So I'm interested. He gave us 100 dinars. Quest, collect five men. The merchant of Jalcala says, You won't be able to do this by yourself, though. If you try and take on the whole gang single-handedly, the hunter will become the hunted, I'll warrant. You'll first want to round up a group of volunteers. There's always a few lads in the villages around here. Looking for a bit of work that's more interesting than tilling the soil or hauling water. They'll follow you if you pay. So, take this purse of a hundred dinars. Consider it an advance on your reward. 
go round to the villages and use the money to hire some help. I'll reckon that you need at least five men to take on these bandits. Press left mouse button to continue. Uh, Tanmura says, Very good, sir. I'll go collect some men from around the villages. And the merchant of Jalkala, good. You can find me again in the tavern here in Jalkala after you've got your group together. Then we'll speak about what we do next. Okay, so we have to meet the merchant of Jalkala in the tavern after I found at least five uh, good men. So I've taken my first quest and I can view the quest log by pressing Q any time in the game. Okay, I'll press Q. Collect five men uh, from nearby villages. I'll click return. I hit the tab key. That gets me out of his room there. Now, if I hit escape and save as, and then save, I'll call this Tamura Start. And return to game. All right, let's step at Jokala. Let's see, you are now viewing the Overland map. Left click on the map to move your party to that location. Enter the selected town or pursue the selected party. Time will pause on the overland map if your party is not moving, waiting, or resting. To wait anywhere, simply press and hold down the space bar. Okay, and at Jalkala, let's click go to marketplace. Trade with the goods merchant. All right, this is the trade screen. Hold down control key while clicking on an item to quickly purchase or sell it. Okay. Furs, he's offering $355. $355 is a decent price for furs. So I'm going to hit control and left click furs. And then left click the furs again. And that's 683 dinars. All right, so return. Oh. Let's take those furs back. And let's just, see, he only has 535 dinars. So we will just get 355 return. The armor merchant has 451, and we'll take 328 for that. Okay, head back, leave, escape, save as. Now we'll, on the next slot, we'll call this progress. Actually, let's save the game here and start the next episode in a minute.